Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be covering everything you need to know about alchemy. We're firstly going to just cover some quick pros and cons about this profession. Alchemy is a little bit more complicated this time around. That's not very surprising, but we're going to be talking about how alchemy is actually structured. And lastly, we're going to be covering over how to level this profession and also some recommended specialization builds. To wrap this intro up, I ultimately am very excited for alchemy, and I think this will be a profession that a lot of people are going to want to pick up. As always, this video is a part of my bigger Dragonflight prep series that is going on right now, where I talk about all of the new systems in place, as well as each profession. So if you're somebody who is looking for another profession, it is either already covered, and I highly recommend checking out that playlist, or it is coming very soon. But everybody, I truly do appreciate you watching this video and stopping by. Thank you so much if you guys are new here for giving me a chance, and thank you so much for the returners for coming back as well. But everybody, thank you so much for watching, and here we go. And so first to start off, as always, let's talk about some pros of alchemy. And thankfully, alchemy is pretty simple in terms of what it does, so these pros are also pretty simple as well. The first one is that everybody needs potions, everybody needs consumables. Whether you are a player who struggles to level and needs some quick mana or healing potions, maybe you are a high-end raider, a casual PvPer, you know, somebody who likes to run Mythic Plus, whatever you enjoy doing, you are likely going to want potions. So because of that, as an alchemist, you're always going to have demand for your products. Everybody needs potions, so you'll always be in business. Secondly, kind of going along those lines, there are a lot of new, interesting items. Now, some of these things are just new, interesting potions that makes, you know, potions a lot more desirable for a larger group of people. Also, there is a new system called Files, which we'll discuss in just a little bit, but basically it is an updated version of Flasks. And then there's also these incense, which a lot of crafters and other people will want to get their hands on. There's just a large range of new items that still fits the alchemy category, but allows you to sell a few more types of things. Then lastly, I consider this a pro, but if you are somebody who is very indecisive, you know, for an armor profession, you have to choose between, okay, do I want to specialize in helmets? Do I want to prioritize cosmetics? You know, are people going to want this set of gear or this set of gear? There's a lot of decisions there, but I do think alchemy is pretty simple because you only have so many paths. So if you're somebody who is kind of looking for an easier profession, a profession that is of course in high demand, but you just don't want to worry about it too much, I think this is the profession for you. Also, I think I said that was the last pro, but this is truly the last pro in that this is also very alt army friendly. If you guys have an alt army or just a ton of alts in general, I highly recommend checking out my tailoring video, but this would be a perfect profession to tie in with tailoring if you are going that route because of these daily cooldowns, which we'll talk about in just one second. And with that being said, this leads us to our cons, and I only have one con. I will let you decide if it's a con or not, but the first one is that there is a lot of RNG with this profession. The new alchemy system relies on discovery, which is not technically new. Discovery has been in the game for a while, but it really wasn't a thing in Shadowlands. I like to talk about discovery if a lot of people have crafted, you know, mop gladiator gear. You know, you craft a daily cooldown every single day. And when you craft that cooldown, you gain a random armor piece. That is basically how this system works. You have some sort of recipe that you have to craft, and if you are lucky, you will discover a new potion. So with that being said, you know, somebody super lucky may progress a lot faster than somebody who has really bad RNG. 
And finally, the last just simple mention, I'm not gonna really say this is a pro or con, it depends on the person. And because alchemy deals with a lot of consumables that are stackable and most of them are BOE, that means you are going to be dealing with the region-wide auction house. So not everybody is sold on the region-wide auction house, a lot of people may or may not like it. So depending on how you feel about it, you may be a little bit sad or you will be very happy. That's just something to throw out there. You will be selling on the auction house, but there we go. And we can move on to step number two. So part two, let's talk about what alchemy actually requires. And anybody who is picking up this profession is going to be very, very happy because it doesn't require a lot. Now, in terms of reputation, there are a few items that come from the Centaur Rep, as well as the Valdraken Accord, which is two of the four main factions of Dragonflight. Now, I will have a picture on screen, and I know you don't really know what those recipes are right now, but in general, they are not a huge deal breaker. So unlike, you know, a profession like tailoring that has eight or nine or 10 items locked behind a single reputation, there is just not a lot locked behind these two. Now, the exception of this is that alchemy does rely on artisan consortium reputation by a lot. Now, Artisan's Consortium is a side faction, and technically, I like to call it the profession faction, as they are the crafters of the Dragon Isles. So you do need to rep grind, but honestly, it's really not that bad. Technically, you want to rep grind anyways with this faction in order to earn knowledge points. So it's one of those things where you're going to be rep grinding anyways, so it really doesn't matter, but there's a ton of recipes tied to this faction. Also, there is a recipe tied to the Cobalt Assembly as well. Moving on, we have our best in slot profession crafted gear. Now, as always, alchemy is a primary profession, so you can equip two accessories as well as one tool. Now, a huge main difference between alchemy and other primary professions is that alchemy can't actually craft any equipment themselves. So, for example, going back to tailoring, you know, tailoring was producing items for six different professions, as well as its own, and that really goes along with any other profession besides alchemy. However, of course, there's still alchemy equipment out there that you will either have to craft by an alt, or you will have to order it through the crafting order system. This is the Master's Wilder Cloth Alchemist Robe, which comes from tailoring. Then we have the Expert Alchemist Hat, which comes from leatherworking. And lastly, we have the Alchemist Brilliant Mixing Rod, which comes from inscription. So once again, you can order those through the crafting order system, or if you have an alt that has any of those professions, you can craft it for yourself. But those are the main things you want to get your hands on. And so moving on, let's talk about recipes and how alchemy works in Dragonflight. Now up first, let's talk about the type of reagents that you're going to be using in this profession. As always, keeping it very simple, you will be using the new Dragonflight herbs that you can get from Herbalism and gathering within all of these zones, and of course, you can buy them on the auction house. This time around, there are four different herbs, and I apologize for my pronunciation, but there is the Wraithbark, the Saxifrage, the Hawkenbloom, as well as the Bubble Poppy herbs. They each are tied to different zones, and these will be what you're utilizing in almost all of your recipes. Now, going along with that, we also have a list of new elemental reagents. Now, if you guys have looked through professions or have seen my previous videos, you will realize that these are used in basically all professions. However, they are especially used in alchemy, which is why I want to bring them up specifically here. But there is a range of a new Awakened Elemental Reagent, as well as Rousing, which is kind of the baby version of the Awakened. And they are also utilized in a ton of these recipes, primarily the Frost as well as the Air versions. Then, kind of an obvious one, but there is a twist with it, is the Draconic Vial. 
Now, if you guys have ever done alchemy in the past, you know that normally you have to buy a vial, and normally the vial comes from the vendor. So it's just a simple vendor item that's generally pretty cheap, and you just utilize it to actually make your potions. And so that still exists. We have the Draconic Vial, which you can buy the quality one version from the vendor. But if you are somebody who wants a high-end vial, remember there is now quality. So there's quality one all the way up to quality three. If you want a top tier Draconic Vial, you will either have to craft them yourself through jewel crafting, or you will have to buy them, once again, probably for a premium from other jewel crafters. So, on a side note, if you're trying to produce the best potions possible, you will need that quality 3 vials, so I highly recommend having a jewel crafter. You don't necessarily have to have jewel crafting paired with alchemy on the same character, but I do recommend having them on at least one of your characters to produce this item for you. As always, you can buy the worst quality from the vendor, so it's not absolutely necessary, but in terms of producing potions and high-end things, you know, that extra quality will be very important. Then lastly, we have two special reagents that alchemy can craft, and it is utilized in a lot of different items. Up first, we have the Omnium Draconis, which sounds like something from Harry Potter, and it is just all four herbs combined, a little bit more Hawk and Bloom, but that is one of the main reagents that you'll be utilizing in some crafts. Next up, we have the Primal Convergent, which is just a ton of the different Awakens, once again, just utilized in a ton of high-end crafts. And with that being said, let's talk about the process of alchemy and get in-game. And so right here, automatically, you will see that alchemy looks a little bit different this time around, especially with these sort of experimentations right here. And this is how the RNG factor comes into alchemy. So at the start, what you're going to unlock is the ability to produce these basic experimentations. And so this is the whole system in place for alchemy to discover new recipes. And you will notice that there are two different versions. Up first, we just have our basic potions. So you know, you have your healing potions, your mana potions, anything traditional potion-like is under this category. Up next, you have a brand new item called a file, which is kind of the replacement for flasks from previous expansions. These are consumables that last throughout death, and this time around, they actually only last for 30 minutes. To show you guys an example right here, as you can see, this one is going to increase my versatility by 631, and it lasts 30 minutes, and it lasts through death. So if I use this item, there we go. Now the cool thing about these files is it allows you to use two at a time. So if I use another, as you can see, my cooldown is now 60 minutes. So this is kind of like a traditional flask lasting for 60 minutes. What this new system allows you to do is change your potions often without having to lose a ton of time. You know, for example, if you know you only need a potion for about 30 minutes or so, you know, you can utilize one right there. We change it to this new file and then it ends in about 30 minutes after a boss fight or whatever. And then you can change without feeling bad. Or let's say, you know, during your whole dungeon, you never want to change. You can quickly consume two of them to up that cooldown and treat it like a normal item. It just adds for a little bit more diversity, and so that is the two types of items that you will mainly be crafting with alchemy. So how this process works is what you will have to do is craft basic items. So as you level up, you will see this soon. You know, at the start, you just have healing potions, you have basic mana potions, and you can craft these using your basic items. Then what a alchemist will have to do you can either sell those items off, or let's say you just crafted some random items that aren't very profitable and you just kind of want to vendor them away. You can use them and reclaim concoctions. This is a huge part of alchemy to utilize your unwanted potions. So, you know, we crafted up some refreshing healing potions that we don't really need and we can reclaim them. What this will do is turn this into this alchemical solution, which will be utilized 
in our experimentation process. So right there, we procced a little bit, but we have seven right here, which allows us to do our experimentation. Now we will talk about this in our specialization section, but you may choose to prioritize potions or you may choose to, you know, focus on files. Let's say we do potions and so we can experiment using our alchemical solutions and other materials. And hey, look, we crafted a potion. Now, sadly, because we did not get a recipe learned notification, this is not a new potion. However, it is the first time that we've crafted this one. So we still got our first craft bonuses, but this is technically not a discovery of a new potion. So it of course isn't the best scenario, but let's try it again and see what we'll get. And boom, that's exactly what we want. Right there, we just discovered a potion, and you can kind of see how this progress works. We can give it one more shot for good measure. And we were lucky again, and we discovered the potion of gust. However, now we're out of artisan metals, we're out of alchemical solutions, so we'll have to go get those to continue. And so that is how the new system of alchemy works. There is a lot of discovery involved, and you will be having to use this system a lot to make sure you unlock all crafts. Moving on, we have the two basic reagents that we were talking about at the start of here, and you guys probably recognized that we were using those Draconis during our experimentations. Then you have our main types of potions, which is your air potions, which have a various different abilities. You know, you can pause and read some of these if you want, but there's just a lot of variety here. And then of course you have your traditional mana potion. Same thing goes with the frost potions. Once again, you can see that air and frost is used a lot here. And same thing goes. These do a variety of things. And lastly, you have your basic healing potion. Moving on, we have our similar kind of potion cauldrons, which were also in Shadowlands. So for anybody who is into raiding, very into cauldrons, these will be for you. There is kind of one basic version and a better one. Also some other similar ones that you can choose to use. Moving on, we just have some more special files and potions, and this is our files category. So same thing applies, just like potions, but we have the air versions as well as the frost versions, which all do very different things. Moving on, we have transmutations, which to the alt armies out there, this will be for you, and you have your daily cooldown for different transmutes. Now, of course, depending on pricing of items, you know, you will likely find that one is more profitable than other, but a lot of these are just turning different types of awakens into other versions. So, you know, if you find out that fire is one of the most expensive ones, you know, you can trade the lesser earth as well as air to make the awakened fire. So, you know, this can be very, very helpful, especially if we see a shortage of a specific awakened. Lastly, we just have some optional reagents as well as finishing reagents. And then we have this brand new item called incense. I think these are super cool to be added to the game, and basically you place them down and they affect everybody in the given area. This one is the coolest for all the crafters out there, because if you place it down, everybody in the vicinity will gain a bonus of inspiration. So, you know, put it down at a bench or something, and then you can inspire everybody around you, as well as yourself, to hopefully make some better crafts. Of course, you have other versions as well. And lastly, you have your trinkets, which are your alchemist stone. So whether you are an alchemist and want one yourself, or you want to craft these for others, you have those as well. Now, moving on after that long list of recipes, let's move on to leveling. Now, unlike other professions, leveling is not as drastic and is a little bit unique due to the RNG factor. With alchemy, with trainer learned recipes, you will only max out at about 50, which is okay, you will still unlock two of your profession trees, but you are only about halfway there, so you will have to craft a lot more items that are either unlocked through reputation or your specializations in order to rank up to 100. 
Now with that being said, you will notice the leveling path on screen requires a lot of RNG and just kind of depends on what potions you unlock during your experimentation. At the end of the day, you know, it's going to work out, but I can't guarantee how expensive it will be based on your RNG if you learn potions, if you don't, and of course, the ones you discover. The amount of knowledge points you're going to get is not exact, but I can say you'll get about 12-ish, 14, 10, somewhere in the 10 to 15 range, depending on, you know, exactly what you do. Either way, not a ton, but it's a nice bonus to have. And so, finally, let's discuss the different builds for alchemy. Now, I am going to keep this very simple and recommend three different types of builds. Please keep in mind that you can ultimately choose whatever path or whatever, you know, own creation that you decide to do. There is so many things you can do with these trees, but I will be highlighting the three main options just to keep things simple. So please don't take this as this is what you have to do. It's just suggestions. And so build number one is our potion master. You are going to want to unlock this potion mastery tree. Remember, all of these unlocks, all of these knowledge points are permanent. You cannot change it. But once you learn this tree, you're automatically going to gain some rewards. So right there, non-combat potions are going to last longer. And as you fill out this tree, you'll be able to gain some different bonuses. What you will want to do is put 10 points into the system in order for you to unlock the next subspec. I recommend going the potion lore route because this will point to the main spec that you want to unlock, but you can go the air route if you want to specialize in air potions, and you can also go the frost route for the same reason. This will allow you to, you know, consume these a lot better, craft them a lot better, and also just you know, be able to produce these at a way better crafting skill and speed. But once you unlock lore, this is just kind of your general stat bonuses, nothing crazy, and you're going to want to put 10 points into this tree. I put 11, but you guys know what I mean. And this is where you have two options. If you are somebody who wants to produce a ton of the basic potions, you find that the basic potions are very good, you know, they're granting a lot of profit, you will want to go into batch production. What this will allow you to do is increase your multi-craft by a ton, meaning you will craft more at a time, ultimately lowering your crafting cost. See right here, you're going to gain crafting speed, multi-craft, you also will unlock, you know, your basic cauldron, multi-craft, and just a ton of extra potions. Then your second option is kind of getting onto that expert side of potions. So, you know, you will gain better breakthrough chances, which is the actual ability of unlocking a new potion when you complete a experimentation. You will gain just more additional chances. And lastly, you will gain the advanced potion experimentation which basically just means that you are going to be discovering the higher quality and the higher ranked recipes. So as you can kind of see here, your options is, okay, do I want to prioritize unlocking those higher end potions? Or do I just want to prioritize, you know, crafting cost of these basic potions and then, you know, go into this tree later? It really just depends on you, it kind of depends on what potions are in demand, which we don't know right now, but that is kind of how this tree works. Up next, the second build we have is basically the same thing, but with files. So you want to unlock that files tree, you're going to gain different advantages for using files, increase, you know, your different crafting chances, basically the same thing as potions. Following that same sort of idea, you're going to put in 10 points, learn file lore, put in another 10 points, and then you're faced with the same dilemma. Do you want to increase your multi-craft work on a ton of crafting speed and ultimately just, you know, produce more so your crafting cost is cheaper? Or do you want to focus on those higher end materials, gain more breakthrough chances so you gain more recipes, and ultimately discover the advanced experimentation. Once again, 
that's ultimately up to you. I can't fully decide that as of right now, just because we don't know what types of potions are going to be in demand, but it's the same sort of thing. Ultimately, keep in mind, if you do want to unlock both of these right here, that is 20 points, then you would have to put in 10 more points here. So we would have to apply 10 more knowledge, and then we can unlock both. So we have 10, this makes 30, maxing this out would be another 20, so we have 50 points, and this is another, so that brings our points to 70. So in order to max out both of these, you need to invest 70 knowledge points. Which, to be honest, is not that much. You will probably get that within the first few weeks, depending on how active you are. So that is really not that big of a deal. But of course, you know, at the end of the day, you just gotta decide what to prioritize first. Then, lastly, the final build is for the alts out there, and this is the transmutation build. So, like before, you're going to unlock the alchemy theory tree, and you will have to put in 5 points to this overall category. Now, just in general, this tree is kind of for all of your just normal alchemy stuff. You know, this side of your tree focuses on inspiration. This side of the tree focuses on resourcefulness. This side focuses on something that we'll talk about in just one second. And right here is just general multicraft, you know, reagents, incenses, and just general abilities of your alchemy. So if you're somebody who just doesn't really know what to put points into, you have extra, this is going to be the tree you want to throw it into. In terms of transmutations, we are going to want this transmutation subspec. What this will do is help you unlock different transmutes, you will improve your skill when crafting transmutes, as well as lowering your cooldown time. So right here, you know, putting in zero points, you've automatically gained plus five resourcefulness. Continuing on, you can gain another plus five. You will unlock the ability to transmute Awakened Order. You will gain more resourcefulness, and you will ultimately unlock the ability to do transmutes a lot more frequently and at a higher rate. So I highly recommend investing your first, you know, 25 points into this tree. 20 will max this out, and you had to put 5 here to begin with. So once again, backtracking, if you're on an alt, you know you're going to have to gain some knowledge points, which you can get from either leveling up the profession, doing some quest, you know, whatever you have to do, but you're ultimately going to want to guarantee 25 points. Now the next step of transmutes is to put in 10 more points here, so you can unlock another subspec. And this is where you want to go to Decay. Now this is for special transmutations, but right here, you know, you can discover recipes that use Decay from experimentation, so a lot of Decay potions and files comes from this branch. And you're going to gain the ability of using these at a better pace, stuff like that. But right here, after 20 points in, you'll be able to actually unlock the recipe for transmuting Awakened Decay. Then, of course, you can gain some more skill if you want, but this 20 points right here is what's super important to just have all of the transmutes unlocked. It's never required, I would say, but, you know, I highly recommend putting all points into this original transmutation, and of course, you can go into this tree if you have some extra as well. But guys, that is really it. That is kind of the three main trees that I recommend. As always, if you're somebody who wants to focus on specific files or potions, you know, choose the own route that's best for you. Of course, you may not know all of that yet, but as you get in game, as you get more comfortable with these systems, you can ultimately pave your own path. And just remember that the most popular way is not always the best way. The popular way can get oversaturated, it can be, you know, less desirable than actually everybody thinks. So take risks, you know, decide what you ultimately want to do, and of course, have fun. Everybody, I appreciate you watching this alchemy breakdown. I hope it helps you figure out if this is the profession for you, or it has just gotten you way more excited about this profession going in. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.